Hey there. Good morning, afternoon, evening. Um, welcome to 50 Questions Friday for the 10th of September. Gosh, it looks dark in here. It's actually just because it's so bright outside this morning. Um, good to see everybody here today. So we have um, a couple questions this morning from the email. But otherwise, if you are here live, if you'd like to add your questions down here on the questions tab, and over here on the chat, feel free to, to chat with everybody. It's, uh, we have a great group of people that are always on that can also answer a lot of these questions and share their experiences. So let's see. Let's actually start with the Trinity breath this morning. Oh my goodness. Look at us all here in the space. Okay, so we're going to take the Trinity breath. Uh, it's just simply that three breaths of just closing your eyes, imagining within your heart is your light, taking a deep breath in from the heart of the earth, connecting heart to heart with the consciousness of the earth, that healing, loving light of the earth. Next, we take a deep breath in from source, soul, creator, God, however you see and say that, take that deep breath into the heart. Next is taking that deep breath in from both earth and sky, bringing the energy of the soul and of the earth right into the, your heart. As those three lights mix together, your soul, creation, the earth, and you, you become that calm of light that's grounded, connected, and in the heart space. All right. So some questions here uh, and saying hello from everybody uh, Hawaii oh my goodness we should come do a 50 questions Friday in Hawaii with you um, Albuquerque I would love to go there too soon Boise Orlando Florida you know I know we have people from all over the world that come and join us here so thank you all for being here all right so our one of our questions we'll go through the questions from the e emails first uh, the first question comes from janice can you put the mini ascension pyramid alongside the quantum grid point pyramids or should the quantum pyramids be spaced apart from the ascension pyramid can the quantum pyramids be put in the corners of the bed okay so can you put the mini ascension pyramid alongside the quantum grid points Yes, so basically any of the pyramids that we make, whether it is the um, the, quant the the small quantum grid points or any of the larger or medium or small size ascension pyramids or that ascension pyramid grid point um, or the ascension grid pyramid, and that's the one. That one always trips me up. So any of the three styles of pyramids that we create will create that connecting between them. So it really does not matter how far you space them in that their energies are gonna be all connected and working together. So if you take your mini ascension pyramid and you have that placed wherever at in your home and you take your quantum grid points and you extend them out farther, like to the edge of your property, even outside or within the home, what it's going to do is it's going to create a larger field. The, the grid points are there simply to expand that size of that field. So, um, going back to the question here, make sure we're covering all this. So, you can certainly put the quantum grid points anywhere within your space. Like I say, it's just going to expand that field. Um, and the, can the quantum pyramids, can the quantum grid points be put in the corners of the bed? Most certainly, um, because when you're placing those quantum grid points and you place them around your home or your property, you have the intention, albeit a soft intention or a very specific intention, of what you want that space to hold for you. Uh, like I say, the flavor of the space. So that could be for um, good sleep, Downloads of information in your dreams, higher connectivity, creativity, um, 
you know, clearing release for yourself and everybody within your space. Um, you know, it's, it's basically, it's limitless. Um, but when you create those intentions, it's always from the heart. So, you know, you don't grid your neighborhood with the intention of, you know, getting rid of everybody who doesn't resonate with you, <laughs> you know, things like that. It's, it's heart centered, um, in, intentions. And of course you can never do wrong with these with any of the tools that we create and you can certainly put out your non heart based intentions into the field but only those that are in alignment will will actually be held and carried there so you can do no harm with the tools um, and you can certainly get creative with the intents that you put in there and let me see I'm going to mute my notifications all right so let's see now we'll go back here and see what other questions we had from the internet um let's see this one okay um let's see this one i'm going to answer it's more of a personal um style question that I'll just answer in an email here. Um, yeah, um, this one, it's I'll answer in an email. So we'll go on to the questions here in the questions tab. All right, so the first question, Ying, can I use the quantum healer to anchor a column of light permanently, just like the golden fire and light wand? Yes, with the quantum healer, um, you know, the quantum healer, we actually have, uh, I believe the anniversary sale is still going on on these, I'm not sure. Um, but we are at our one year anniversary of the quantum healer. Now, these are fantastic, phenomenal little tools. Just passively, it does great things for, for every aspect of the human. Um, it, Cause it's holding that high field and that connectivity, but using it actively as the wand, you can use it like the golden fire and light wand to anchor the columns of light. Um, you can have the intentions of bringing through the dragon wand to create the fields to work with the dragons, just like on the webinar for the dragon wand. Um, and the fairy wand, same thing, it is coming through here. And it also contains the, um, the, the other wand, the, um, oh my goodness, I can't believe I forgot the name of the other wand. Um, but this contains all the wands that we create. And so basically you can, just with intention, bring through whatever specific wand. So yes, the golden fire and light wand is very present in here to use to anchor the columns of light. Um, and Ethan, hey, the everything ring, every time I wear it and work with the ring, I feel I'm in Lemuria, Mu. And I see myself there, and I feel we worked with the rings when I was in another life. Do you have any comments about Tensor Tools rings being used in Lemuria and Mu? Who? So... Yeah, I totally feel that, Ethan. Um, so Lemuria was here before Atlantis. Um, Lemuria was a more ancient civilization, and they were, you know, they were in one of the older cycles of time of the Earth. And we weren't humans yet. Um, we were many different things in Lemuria, but we weren't humans. Humans did not exist at the time of Lemuria. Um, so the things that uh, that we did there were very much heart-based creations. And, you know, with the everything ring, it does bring through all of the templates that have ever been created in on this planet for certain. Um, I'm not sure how far out those, the the everything ring extends. Um, so 
That is pretty fantastic, Ethan, that when you use the Everything Ring, that you have such a vivid experience there in Lemuria and using the tools. You know, truly all time, time is a wild thing. Time exists not in a linear fashion, um, especially when we're using the tools and we're in our heart space and, and just the, the universe holding space in general right now. It allows us to transcend time to actually be there in that moment. And so it is also why the work that we do with the human in this here now time affects everything. It affects the future and the past. You know, we have the concept in linear time where anything we do now can affect the future. But also anything that we do now can affect the past. That's why we do the clearing for all of our past lives. That's why we do the clearing for all of our ancestors. as because as we do that work, that affects us in the here and now. Um, but I, you know, that. thank you for bringing that up, Ethan, because I had never really considered that, but I totally feel that and can almost see that as well. Um, let's see, next question. When the prototype sale page is up, will any of the quantum grid points with tensor rings be available to purchase? I got one with the subscription service, and it's really cool. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> yes, actually... When the prototype sales page goes up, and I know I'd promised that it would have been up this week, um, and I'll try to still make this happen. Um, I have a holistic fair here that leaving for today. But with the prototype subscription page, we will certainly have those different quantum grid points with rings, as well as other tools in them, and um, crystal tips on these quantum grid points. These ones are my favorite so far because when you run energy with them with that little quantum grid point and crystals are, crystals will bring so much coherency and pinpoint and they bring consciousness through also. Uh, so when you're using one of those um, quantum grid points, the crystal tip, they are amazing. And we will, we have a very few of those and we will certainly have those listed on the prototype product page. Um, for those who have the subscription. Um, and, oh man, I encourage you guys all to get a subscription just to check out the tools that will be on there um, because there's a lot of just one-of-a-kind tools that we are creating. Um, you know, because everybody here at the studio has been getting super creative. And so we have some pretty cool little things and that will be available on that subscription page. And, uh, and we'll certainly send out an email to all of those of you who have a, um, the prototypes subscription. We will be certainly sending that email out here as soon as possible um, so that you can have that to look at. And we'll probably send pictures out to tease everybody else too on what we have. Um, let's see, next question. After placing a golden fire disc on the fuse box, will the energy flow through and restructure power strips that are plugged into the wall outlets? Yes, so when you put your, put your golden fire disc onto the electrical panel or into any of the household plugs, it will flow all the way forwards and backwards, so to speak, through the entire electrical system, including all the way back out to the transformer box and to your neighbors. Where it comes in that the, the electrical is transformed again, so it'll go through the power strip. But then when it comes to like, let's say a refrigerator, and it comes into the refrigerator, there is something there with, um, with the electronics, the motors, all of that, that then takes that coherent energy that that electrical now is. So it's gone from a discoherent we put the golden fire disc onto it, it becomes a coherent uh, flow of electrical. When that comes into the, um, into the, like the refrigerator, into all the electrical components and the motor and all of, all of that changes that electrical flow and then it becomes disharmonious again. So, I mean, a little loud, we got a large tractor driving by. And that's the beautiful thing about living in a tiny town. Um, all right, so 
So yes, it'll work all the way to your power plugs, but then when it hits your electronic devices, um, you know, computers, refrigerators, whatever it is, that will then take that harmonious energy and it will make it a disharmonious one again. That is why, like with my laptop here, I love the nine and a half inch harmonizer ring. I, you know, I don't use my laptop without it because it um, it, it brings. It, the, the harmonizer ring is one of the more powerful rings that I've that I feel is harmonizing electromagnetic so um, the nine and a half inch harmonizer ring is fantastic for laptops a uh, question about the t-shirts will any new sizes be available soon or new styles like the 5g 5d generator on a shirt oh my yes the t-shirts are something that um, Yeah, just yesterday it was brought up again at, at a meeting at the studio um, about getting the t-shirts going. And yes, we have so many projects, but yes, we want to get the t-shirts going again. I'm actually gonna work with a local t-shirt company to help us get um, the artwork in the screens, um, that part ready for us. So then we can just take it, burn our screens and start start printing with our crystal infused inks and so yes we want to start working on new designs and getting these t-shirts out into the world because they are just like wearing a tool um, you know we've had that key pendant t-shirt and that is it's bringing through the energetics of the tools because it is that crystal infused ink we're anchoring in those etheric templates into those t-shirts so thank you for bringing the question up about the t-shirts because that is something that uh, and I totally need to be fully inspired to to get this going. Um, let's see, next question. Can we develop some fatigue using 24-7, the rings? So the, the question about using the rings and any fatigue by using them 24-7, so usually people are pretty, um, you're relaxed, but yet you're also energized when using the tools for the most part. Now there have been, especially like with the, um, with the alchemist rings, some people have noted that for a moment things can just get heavy and some people, and this is all very individual for every person, but when in using the tools, but I have heard reports of like a couple of people that have noted that things get just really heavy and it's just bringing the things up for release and they feel like they have to go take a nap, which is absolutely perfect because so much occurs when we are asleep and we are allowing. And so, when um where the the question is about fatigue using the rings 24 7. now truly using any of the tensor tools 24 7 is fantastic the more you can be in the fields the better they are a smart tool in that it is only only what comes through is what your soul decides um what your higher self what your higher consciousness chooses to bring through for you in time that is always in your highest and best good from that perspective of that higher soul of that higher soul self um, of your higher consciousness and so it is very individual if you feel like you are having that fatigue what i would suggest is to surrender into it um, to if you need to and you can take the rest because so many energies that are coming through right now and in the past week are asking us to go rest um you know and and if you're able to be in the in a place and space that you can do that that's fantastic and if you're not then just go into the heart take those breaths and Think of it as something that is coming up for either release or change within your being. 
And so it, again, it goes back to that allowing. Take the breath, just have that intention of allowing all that's in your highest and best to take place with quickness, grace, and ease. Quickness, grace, and ease. You can make that intention into your field when you are doing any of this work, that things happen with quickness, grace, and ease. And let's see, and what tool is most appropriate to send healing to babies? Absolutely any. Um, again, where these are, the, the tool, these fields are beneficial for all beings. And with, with babies, you know, babies especially where they are, you know, they've, they've been in that wonderful frequency of being in the womb and before that, of, of, you know, of that space that they come through from. And it, it's, a, it's a beautiful frequency. And when they step out here and they are, you know, kind of bombarded by everything in the world, it is great to be able to um, send them that energy of any of the tools, whether it's a column of light, um, you know, using the wings of talk to send that there to hold space. Um, you know, holding space for babies is a fantastic thing to do because it allows them to get, you know, their, their bearings and allows them to, to, to be in their own and to expand that light that they are better. Um, let's see, another question. When I was in Lemuria, I was, I was a being from Cirrus and I don't have a physical body. But I keep feeling we worked with the energies of the tensor tools and by working with the everything ring now. Oh, so Ethan, yes, um, your experience of being there in Lemuria and working with the tools. Um, I feel that very much. Um, excuse me. The, um, because that's it, is that any of the work that we were doing there with these tools we were, that we were creating at that time is in the everything ring. And so it's really awesome to see everything full circle there for you, that you're experiencing the tools in the here and now, and you're experiencing at that time in the co-creation of these tools that you are using in the here and now. I mean, that, that, that's absolutely beautiful. Um, and so, in that you worked with these energies that are now being brought through the tensor tools. Yes, and that is exactly it, is that um, as we were working with and in creation of these tools at that time, that changes everything in this here and now. And, and that's that whole concept of that time is truly not linear, that when we do something in another time space, it does affect everything in the here and now because everything truly is aligned in this here now moment. And in bringing time into alignment is something maybe we'll do that meditation here at the end and to hold space for everybody to bring time into alignment in the here and now, because it is, it's a powerful experience and it, it's, it's a beautiful way to, to affect everything that you are. Well, let's see, another question. Have you tried attaching the ether elemental to your golden fire wand? And wow, I did, and wow, great energy. That's fantastic that you, um, that you use that ether elemental with the golden fire and light wand. Um, you know, and, and that's it. It's just playing with all of the different tools and, and just trusting your guidance on how to use these tools because we get so much different feedback. Um, and, and again, if you haven't left a testimonial on our on the products, please do because things like this are what people like to hear and see is other people's experiences, especially when they're combining tools. I know, Ethan, you leave a lot of testimonials there on your use and combination of the tools, which is fantastic because that inspires other people. And um, so I, I love the fact that you use the ether elemental with the golden fire and light wand. Um, not many people are as tuned into that ether elemental, but more and more are right now. Um, because it, I, I, I've been having epiphanies with that ether elemental too, 
for myself and what it truly means on that um, integration of everything. Um, because the ether, that's, that's what that ether elemental says is, I have no name, I am everything. And to me, it's always been everything in between physical matter. So you know how physical matter is, um, you know, 99% just space within there, the space between the physical atoms. And that's what I've always seen in the ether as, is what exists between the space of all physical construct. Um, anyway, uh, Diane, is the chalice energy of the rings the same chalice energy the knights in the round table sought? Yes, it is. Um, so the chalice energy that the Essenes carried, that the Knights Templars carried, um, that is the chalice energy and so that's really where we got the name for the chalice energy um just because it was a lack of of words or description you know if you call it anything i would call it crystal clear pure consciousness light that's existed in this universe since the beginning um and it's just remained dormant it is just it's it's been there in the undercurrents and you know, during the times, um, you know, like the Knights of the Round Table and the Knights Templars and prior to the Essenes, it was, you know, just a group of people who were tuned into that chalice energy that were, you know, at the time they, they knew they had something really profound, but they did not know what to do with it because at that time, they were scared to bring it out into the world for the fear of, you know, just everything that was occurring at the time. Anything that was in a higher consciousness was, you know, it was tried to be stamped out by, by everything else in the world. Um, but yeah, we will, we'll have to do an entire class one of these days on the chalice energy. Um, Let's see, next question. Can I set multiple intentions with the same pyramid grid point? Oh, yes, totally. So when you are using, um, when you are utilizing the quantum grid points or the ascension pyramids and you are putting your intentions with creating that space, yes, the more intentions you put in there, absolutely the better. Um, they will all harmonize with each other and only those that are it have the highest potential in every moment will be brought through and that's the same with like the tensor field generators that you put intentions into is that you can put you know, multiple intentions into it and um, also like with the um with your merkaba field your merkaba is another tool an electromagnetic field that we carry that you can put those intentions into and the more you put in there the better um it's just you know it's just broadening the horizons um, so let's see going back to chat here all right uh north carolina and colorado hey valerie in colorado I'll be down in Colorado here soon for some holistic fairs. I think Fort Collins, Loveland, and then here in a few weeks is the Colorado Springs Fair. Um, so let's see. We had um, we had our our um, transcending the matrix workshop last. Uh, well, it's been two weeks ago now. Oh my. Uh, the Transcending the Matrix workshop that we did out in Iowa was pretty fantastic. Um, there, there is about a 40-minute video that I'll be putting out here over the weekend on YouTube <clears throat> that is an excerpt from that workshop that is just about the tensor tools. So uh, there will be a 40-minute block of just tensor tools and the etheric templates, and um, it goes more into that woo-woo side of the tools of working with all the energetics of the tools you know we talk about discovering the golden fire ring and um and and discovering the golden fire and light wand that style of of story is what is in that video so that'll be again this weekend on youtube and for the rest of the conference um we we decided that we are going to release that um we're just we're going to have 
we're going to determine the price today on what that workshop is. It's it's about a four and a half hour um, video on that workshop that we did in Clinton, Iowa, and um, and of course it was kind of interesting because we did a new way of anchoring columns of light there that I taught, which to me was almost a little bit confusing, but for some reason it did not videotape that section. So we will include with this video also the other videos of columns of light because that was um, basically the culmination leading up to everything of receiving the different attunements and activations so that when you create the columns of light that you are bringing through all of those other energies into those columns. Um, Let's see, will tensor rings enhance PEMF magnets? Ooh. So, you know, tensor fields and magnetic fields are doing some very interesting things together. Um, you know, we've done a gaseous discharge visualization, GDV, with a magnet and tensor fields. And with this GDV imagery um, in a video form, you could see the electromagnetic or you could see the tensor fields coming into the inside of a tensor ring and then we did a video of a magnet and you could see the magnetic fields just extending moving outside of the magnet we put the ring over the magnet and it's like it um, takes all those magnetic fields and it um we're not sure what it's doing with it if for a moment the, the magnetic fields will disappear, then all of a sudden they'll arc over onto different spots of the copper. You know, copper is, you know, copper is not, doesn't, you know, their magnetic fields do not attract to copper. Um, so we are not exactly certain what, um, what the applications of using the tensor rings and the magnets truly are. It is going to be beneficial for certain using your PEMF and the tensor rings. When, when I used to use um, the PEMF for um, using with some of our frequency devices that I used to work with, um, we'd always use tensor rings with those and they just felt better um, to me. So I would certainly try it because it's not gonna do any harm using the tensor rings with the magnets just to see and um, and I would go by feeling on that, what feels best for you as you're experimenting with that. <clears throat> well, let's see, another question. I have a relative fighting cancer. What tool would you suggest for them? I was thinking a generator, but not sure which one would be best for them. Also, which generator tool would be best for a child with autism? Okay, so on the first question about um, the tensor tools and cancer. So, we have to be very gentle in our walking around and talking about that, or at least I do from my business owner perspective. We had a friend, um, an associate down in Golden, Colorado, who used our, when we first came out with the Tauruses, we came out, um, our second one was the Harmony Taurus. So at the time we had the Harmony Taurus. And he was using that, that Harmony Taurus. Um, it's like the cosmic sun disk, the Taurus. And he was using that for the basis of his cancer treatment facility, along with foot baths and um, for detoxing and just doing detoxing in general. He's since no longer around. Um, I, he's kind of disappeared and I'm not sure um, I think that he was facing a little bit of, of, of um, legal troubles with, with everything because of him healing cancer. The tool that I have always suggested in the past is the Golden Fire Taurus for working with cancer because we're not, we're not healing cancer. We are going to what all of the energy healers that work with cancer, okay, not all of them, most energy healers that work with cancer would see that cancer begins in the emotional field, as with all dis-ease and all of creation. 
it begins in higher dimensional fields. So then we get to the emotional field. The emotional field where you have a lot of just, you know, carry all your crap. And it's just right here. And it's just this big, big ball of just dense, funky energy, low vibration. And it's in your emotional field. And that manifests into the physical, all emotion stuff. Everything that we have as dis-ease manifests into the physical from, from those spaces. And why the Taurus was working so good, especially the golden fire, is, is that it is clearing the emotional field. And so once you clear the emotional field and you clear any of the other debris, then you become into the state of the human that you are, which is healthy, wealthy, and wise. The human innately is healthy, wealthy, and wise. Oh my goodness, we are infinitely abundant. I'm not talking about money. We are infinitely abundant. We are healthy. I mean, we are vibrant beings full of light. But throughout all of our experiences here um, that we drag through with us, that is the name of the game now in the, what we are doing with the tools, with the consciousness work, is we are clearing. We are clearing the debris to allow us to be that being that we have the highest potential to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. So clearing the emotional field for cancer is huge because then you be, can, because healing is not done from anything outside of you. Healing is only the person. The person allows their own healing to occur. You, there are really no healers. Anybody out there on the tools, you know, Brenda, anybody, who, who does this work, all they are doing is they are holding the space to allow the person to do their own healing. It is only the person that can heal themselves. So what I recommend for people who are working with cancer is a tool that will help release a lot of that emotional, mental um, stuff that they carry for lifetimes. With that, some great tools for clearing those emotional fields that, that predispose us to dis-ease within our being. Um, the Tauruses are fantastic. You know, before it's always been the golden fire Taurus because you get in attunement with Brenda where she helps you bring in your soul's light. Um, and so the golden fire Taurus has traditionally been a fantastic one. But anymore, I would suggest the divine I am Taurus with the attunement. So when that divine I am Taurus is being made, um, it attunes, Brenda comes along and attunes it to your light. Um, and then it's, then it is a beautiful tool for for you for doing all of your work. And so if you get this Taurus for somebody, they don't necessarily have to be an in-depth worker and understand or even believe in any of these things of the clearing work that simply these tools will hold space for that clearing to take place automatically. Um, so yeah, the Divine I Am Taurus is, is a fantastic one. And even the Divine I Am Tensor Field Generator is a fantastic one too, because the Divine I Am Tensor Field Generator or the Taurus are both going to be holding space for the releasing of all these emotional debris that we've accumulated through lifetimes that no longer serve us, that we as the human are ready to release. And then when you surrender in more into it, surrender into the allowing, then more things can take place. Because so many times we unconsciously hold on to the crap. We very much unconsciously hold on to that crap. And so the more that we can consciously surrender to the soul and allow the release of this stuff that we don't even know it's there, it just happens. Um, sorry about the long rabbit hole there with, with the answer, you know, with, with answering that question. Um, and then which generator or tool would be best with, for a child with autism? Um, you know, traditionally when, uh, is, is my, 
you know, most of my family are educators and when my, you know, and, and half of them did work in special ed in, in the public school systems. And they would find that, you know, a larger tensor field generator was fantastic for, for any kids because it would just bring them into a calm space. Now, traditionally, we've suggested the, the larger golden fire generator, but now I would suggest that divine I am tensor field generator. It's that smaller three inch one that you can hold in your hand that brings through such a feeling of peace and it brings in, you know, it just brings in that bright white light around you. Your team is there. It's, it's just, it's a beautiful space. And especially for those who have, you know, that are so sensitive, um, this helps bring in a field of space to where they don't have to be as sensitive to everything that's around them because it creates such a field of peace around them. So for, for a child with autism, Definitely the divine I am generator is what I would suggest. Um, and because too, it creates a larger field. So it's not like they have to carry it with them all the time. It can just be within the home um, and it's going to be still holding that field for them. Any suggestion on what tools to use for my client who has COVID? His symptoms change hourly. Pardon me, I need to drink a tea here this morning. Um, for COVID, um, you know, maybe not a specific tool rather than, um, for someone with COVID, you know, it's a lot of it is in the mindset, um, that we've noticed because we've seen that people that are in deep fear with it and are in resistance to it have a harder time in general. I mean, that's just what we've seen in general is the people who are resistant and in fear um, have a harder time. And so one of these is kind of a mental thing of, you know, we've always seen viruses. Viruses are a field of consciousness. And we've always seen viruses as beneficial to the person scientifically that even shows that viruses change the DNA within your body. And so whenever we've gotten a cold or the flu, um, we always treat it as that field of consciousness. We, we simply, um, we send it energy. We send it heart-based energy to raise the frequency and vibration of that consciousness. So for one, we want to raise the frequency and vibration of the field of consciousness of any virus. And as we raise the frequency and vibration of it, then we can then trust that it is doing more in the highest and best for us. So as, so to raise the frequency and vibration of the, con of, of the consciousness of a virus, it is simply an intention in using any tool. So you can use a ring, you can use a wand, a torus, a tensor field generator, and simply just imagining that field of consciousness and sending that energy of that tool or of just the heart to that field of consciousness with the intention that it is working for you, that it is working for you in the highest and best. Now, that really takes us out of the whole paradigm with COVID and fear, right? COVID is not, it's more about what is being perpetuated into people, people's perceptions of fear and feeding into that. And then that feeds into the COVID, into that virus. If you disconnect that, that feeding of the fear into the virus, and you come at it from the heart, it will shift it. My daughter and I have had it twice. Um, the second time was a cakewalk. Very little symptoms. Um, and we know a lot of people who have had it that basically, uh, that are not in fear with it, and that do do this with it, that they don't go into fear with it, and that they just send it their love and they surrender and it goes so much easier and better. But then that is not to say that 
you know, we've seen that. So we feel that another, you know, there's multiple reasons for the COVID to be here from our perspective. The biggest one, number one reason is, is that it is a co-creation that we created to help shake the shit out of us right now to wake us all up. We could have done this big, huge transition in consciousness in many other ways. You know, a lot more death and destruction and heartache. Not to diminish anything that's going on with COVID. But this is something that is in our co-creation. Remember, nothing can happen to you that our souls do not agree upon. This is something that we agreed upon at this time to happen. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing, and truly it is. But yet, it also allows for those who are ready to cross, to cross, um, to cross over, to die. And, you know, because there are so many people on the planet that that is not why they came here to to take our bodies and to do this transcendent thing, um, you know, to, to step into a higher frequency and vibration while we're still alive in this particular lifetime. So a lot of people did not come here for this or don't want this as a soul level and as a human level choice. So though it is a way out for those who are needing that way out, um, it's also level stuff. If you can take a step back and look at things from that different perspective, um, it's a lot easier to, to be at peace with everything that's going on in the world right now with all the chaos and all the things that are surfacing, um, th that higher perspective and from the heart, uh, it, it shifts everything. And again, not trying to diminish. It's not like we are, you know, spiritual bypassing or just putting our head in the sand, but yet there's a lot to be said for what we put our attention onto and what we and the flavor of our attention our attention and fear you know that is a different creation than being a heart-based attention where you have your attention at and it's, it goes back to the old thing of don't watch the news if the news changes you being and when you were standing in your power and your light and you watch the news and you can change the news by it not affecting you, but you affecting it in a positive way. Same with anything else in this world. Um, sorry, I'll get off my soapbox with that. <clears throat> uh, Diane, how strong and how far can a tensor ring broadcast on a radionics machine? Is a witness needed for this? Um, so when we're working with a tensor field or when we're working with a radionics field, they are quantum fields. There is no limit within time or space. You know, and when you're using radionics, I highly suggest using a tensor field with that because it, it, it allows it to one, always be in the highest and best good, your broadcast. And two, it does allow it to reach a much more broader, higher spectrum quantum field. I mean, it allows you to reach further in time and space. The tensor fields do just innately. Um, so using a, um, a tensor ring and radionics and your witness, of course, you always need your witness. Your witness can simply be a photograph. So let's say, um, let's bring it here for everybody who would use a tensor ring. And you would use a tensor ring as like your radionics you know, because radionics is simply a quantum field. It's in an AM um, wave. It, it's it's in the AM field, um, and so it, it's simply quantum. So, in radionics, or with a, just a simple tensor ring, or a tensor field generator, or your torus, or your pyramid, you can put a photograph of somebody in there, and that's what in radionics terms they call a witness. Um, you know, some believe that the witness has to be like a piece of DNA, the quantum entanglement, all of that, but you are a powerful creator and you're the one that can simply put that intention of who is in there. And you don't even really need a photograph. That is simply for your attention and your belief that you are putting them into that quantum field. You can just be in the heart space and bring in their soul or just imagine them standing in that ring or in that radionic field and you are broadcasting that to them. And so, um, yeah, uh, so, and as far as how strong the tensor rings, the tensor rings will amplify a radionics broadcast by many times. Um, they are, you know, and it reduces your broadcast time. We work with a um, 
there's a gentleman who we teach class with at a master radionics convention here in South Dakota who he uses um, the rings with his broadcast. And when he's broadcasting to, let's say, a cold virus, and it takes him 20 minutes of a broadcast time to, uh, to shift that cold virus. And when he uses a tensor ring in his broadcast, it only takes 20 seconds to broadcast to that person to shift that cold virus, to shift that virus to where it is more beneficial to the person. Um, do you know which hertz on a radiox machine works best with different rings? Uh, no, you know, I am not versed enough in radionics. I merely dabbled in radionics just enough to understand the, the whole concept in the field. But if I always use the Kelly machines, the KRT machines, and all I would do with my Kelly machines is I would put one dial to zero, one dial to 100, and then I would fill my broadcast station and my antenna with different tensor tools and crystals and whatever my intentions of broadcasting to were. So I just create an open space from zero to 100 and just allow the broadcast to take place. Um, but if you are interested, uh, Diane, in radionics, um, I have a friend, Marty Lucas, who is teaching in Denver, I believe this, gosh, I think he's teaching there this next weekend or maybe this weekend. And then we're having our annual event, the Radionics with the Masters, here in Rapid City, South Dakota, in October, the, the very end of October. Um, so if you're interested in that, please do check out the TwistedSage.com resources page, or no, TwistedSage.com events page. And on the events page, there is the, the Radionics um, Symposium there, too. <clears throat> um, let's see. And so I'm just looking over here on chat. Everybody's talking about the elementals and stuff. Um, pretty fantastic. And Judy's sharing um, Chant of the Four Elements from one of my favorite people in the world, Tom Kenyon. Oh my goodness, I love Tom Kenyon stuff. His books really um, changed my world. Uh, the, the Hawthor book um, about the Hawthors and also... Let's see, do I have it sitting here in our library? Um, no, I don't. There was another really fantastic book that Tom Kenyon wrote, the Arcturian Anthology, um, that uh, is, is kind of mind-bending, but I, I, I resonate with Tom Kenyon's work. So anyway, uh, over here discussing the elementals um, is what's going on on the chat side. So again, if you're watching the video later, um, it's always fun to be here live and in person. Is it okay to use a tensor ring with a frequency generator that produces a square wave? Will tensor rings crash square waves? That is a good question. Um, I have used the square wave generator before, and I always, you know, with the with the Spooky Two machines, and um, I've always kept a tensor ring with those, no matter what. And I am not technical enough or technically understanding enough to see what it does to that square wave with the tensor field. Um, and I'm sorry, I cannot answer that question. Um, yeah, so some of the more technical things. I know, I know um, Brenda's been getting a lot of technical questions recently. She's like, oh, I'm sorry, I cannot, cannot go there on technical questions. Um, because it, it is kind of getting out of the realm of, of, of what we do with um, heart-based and simple. All right, well, um, let's see. So let's go ahead then and do this, um, this meditation and then we'll, um, then we'll call it a day here. I see we've gone almost an hour. Oh my goodness, where does time go? All right, thank you all for being here and for bringing your questions. Um, I appreciate it greatly. So does everybody else who is watching these because um, you guys are asking great questions and thank you too for amber hi amber she's out there right now and she's going through all of our older um youtube 50 question fridays and she is going through and time marking with questions so as as you guys go through and go through the youtube channel 
you'll note that uh, slowly but surely we are getting the timestamps with questions on those YouTubes to make it easier to navigate. So we'll actually, so then these will actually be beneficial to people in the future and not just those in this very now. Um, all right, so here we go. We are going to do a meditation of aligning all time and space in the here now. And it is, it's very simple. Basically, we're going to go into the heart space and I'm going to hold the space and we're all going to be holding the space as our soul knows the intention and we're just going to align everything into the here now. So here we go. So going into the heart, just taking that deep breath from the earth into the heart. The deep breath of creation, source soul into the heart. Taking the breath of both together into the heart, mixing it with you. You become that column of light that is grounded into the earth, connected to creation, and you are in the heart space where you are so supported. It is our intention to align all that we are into this here and now moment, bringing in all of our future and past potentials. Taking a deep breath, just allowing all to come in into this here and now moment, all past, present, future potentials. Now make the intention with your soul that you step forward in your highest potential in every moment, in every moment, forward, backward, present, that you are aligned with your highest potential. And allow that to shift everything in your being. Beautiful, beautiful work. And it is simple and quick and easy as that. So go back to this energy as often as you can throughout the day because it brings in your highest potential. You are a master and you have been masters in many lifetimes. And this brings in that wisdom of you you are a very wise being, healthy, wealthy, and wise. Till next time.